Golf is hard when you flip, but most golfers do it. So I see almost everybody that comes to me for lessons over the years tends to do the same thing. They stand up out of their posture a little bit, so they're getting farther away from the golf ball. They cast a little bit in the downswing, and then when they hit the golf ball, the shaft is straight up and down. It adds a ton of loft, makes you hit it shorter. It makes it more of a glancing, weak blow. And worst of all, it actually pulls the sweet spot higher to where you're gonna tend to hit on the low part of the club. A lot of thin, kind of clunky filling shots when you're doing that. Well, I'm gonna show you a trick or a couple tricks here. It's gonna help you to finally get the wrist angles. And once you learn these wrist angles, it's gonna be a lot easier. So here's number one. I wanna feel like instead of my left wrist being kind of flat like this or even, even bent back like that, I wanna feel like my rest, left wrist is bowed. That's a tricky feeling for a lot of players. So here's what I want you to do to really feel that. Take a golf ball and put it in the palm of your hand. And I want you to make a few kind of practice swings here to where when you're coming down, your hand would actually be turned in like this. Now, if I had a golf club there, that would be coming from the inside. I wouldn't be steep or over the top. So I'm actually gonna have my hand pointing in. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but that's exactly what I wanna feel. Now, when I go to impact, I'm gonna have my hand pointed slightly inside out. That would be more of a draw type shape or have my club moving inside out that way. And I want the ball to still be presented back up to me. If I was to flip my wrist, then it would fall down. So I'm turning my hand in, I'm coming to impact, and it's only when I get all the way up to here that I feel like I can go ahead and let that golf ball come out of my wrist. Now, if I do the same thing with a club, I'm gonna have that club from the inside. Now my hand will be kind of presented back up to me. At impact, I'm gonna have my wrist turned slightly in like that. Look at all this shaft looking now. I mean, this thing is really gonna compress against the face. And it's not until I rotate on through here that I go ahead and let the club fold up and release. So you really feel like this hand is just staying like that all the way into the finish, and then it flies on through. Now, the second piece of this is you can do the same thing with the right hand. You just take the hand, bend it back. The right hand isn't gonna turn in quite as much. You go as much as you can. At impact, you're gonna feel like it's really square toward the target, That's, and you're gonna be swinging out to the right. And then in the follow through, you're gonna feel like the palm of your hand is toward the target as long as you can go. Same thing with the right hand. Some people like filling it with the right hand a little bit better. Now the second piece here is what I call the reverse K smack. So when I come down to impact here, I wanna have that shaft lean. And if you kind of imagine a vertical line, then uh, for my leg, so my ankle, my hip, my shoulder, that's a vertical line. Then the club shaft itself is leaning forward, which would be the bottom of the K, and my right arm is leaning this way, and that would kind of make a K shape here. That's good impact. That's where you want to be, and that's what the pros are doing when they're playing great golf. So I want to go ahead and get in that same position and just smack the turf. I don't want to get used to making little practice swings where I do this, and I let that club kind of flip past my hands. I want to get to that reverse K, and I just kind of want to hit the turf. So I want to feel like I can smack the ground, and I look down, I'm still in this K-type shape here. I don't want to be like this when I smack the ground. So I smack the ground, and then I look like that. Well, I've lost my K, my club went on the wrong side of it. I got to be back here. So get used to smacking the ground while you're doing that, and having the hands stay in front of the club shaft. Then add the right hand, and do the same kind of thing. I'm kind of making that K shape, so even when I hit the ground and I finish, I'm still in that shaft back K shape type position. Now finally, for the release, I wanna go ahead and make sure that I do go ahead and let this club go, but it's not gonna be all the way up here until up in here is what I'm gonna feel. I wanna feel like when I get into my follow through, when my club shaft is in pa parallel to the ground in the follow through, I want this club head to be as far away from my chest as possible. So I'm feeling like I'm coming in here and then I'm extending through the shot. My chest is pointing up to the sky a little bit or at least level with the ground. And my arms are long, my club is long. The reason that's so important is if I stand up and flip, I'm gonna be here when I'm in that position instead of there. Those three things are gonna help you to train your wrist properly and it's some really solid shots. So I'm gonna have those same kind of feelings here and it's <laughs> gonna make it a whole heck of a lot easier to hit this golf ball with a nice tight draw. Let's give it a whirl. There we go, really solid. Not gonna do much better than that. Now, there is one piece that we still left out of here. There's one move that almost every golfer makes that causes them to have that face open at impact. 
And once you hear what I'm going to say, you're going to think, yep, that's exactly what I did. Now, the problem with this move is not only does it cause us to get a little steep, it causes us to have the face open, stand up out of our posture, like I mentioned, all these things that we don't want to have happen. That one move, once we get it right, is going to allow us to shallow the club, come from the inside, have shaft lean, have all these great things that we just talked about in this video. I'm going to play a preview of that, and it's what I call the anti-roll method. And once you learn what this is, you're going to be like, daggone, I wish I'd known this forever, for, for forever. So I'm going to play a preview of that video here in one second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card. It pops up on your screen. If you don't see the card, don't worry. Go down to the description below, click the link there, and you'll get instant access to this video that goes over what the anti-roll method is. Now it's gonna help you to get that club shallowed out and from the inside. Until we get it shallow and from the inside, until we learn the right way to, to square up the face from that position, then we're gonna always struggle doing this. It's like we know we can do this, we know it's right, but there's still a missing piece. That's what I'm gonna go over in the next video. So go ahead and check out the anti-roll method right now. Click that link and I'll see you there. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,